One of the most difficult kinds of questions I get asked is bike comparisons. When I get asked, is this bike better than this one? And there are just so many variables that come into place that most of the time my answer is, well, it depends. And to illustrate this, I'm gonna do a deeper bike comparison between two bikes that I both really like that are very different and I also happen to own, and that is the Crest Bambora and the Rivendell Sam Hillborn. So which one is better? Well, it depends and I'll show you how. First, let's talk about the Crest Bambora. This is a bike, when I test rode it, I truly fell in love with it. At the time when it came out, it was actually fairly unique. There weren't many bikes with a roadish geometry that could take big tires. Now it's kind of a little bit more common, but back then they were far and few between, especially those that had all sorts of mounts that you could take touring or commuting. So in terms of some general specs, it is a steel bike, steel frame and steel fork. There are some corks though. It's got a post mount uh, front brake and a flat mount rear brake. It's nicely outfitted with eyelets for both a rear rack. You can run a rando rack and low riders. It doesn't have a three pack mount, but for me, that's not a big deal breaker. It's got a lugged fork with this nice gentle curve. And for me, that is one nice thing I like about this bike as opposed to a very similar bike like the Midnight Special, which just has kind of a, a two bulky and utilitarian unicrown fork. Nothing wrong in terms of function, but I do like the curve bend and the lug on this fork. Another big difference when you compare this to the RIV is it does have a threadless fork, but we'll get into how that makes a difference a little bit later on when I talk about the RIV. Components and build aside, the thing that really attracted me to this bike was the geometry and the ride quality. Again, when this bike first came out, it was fairly unique in terms of the geometry. It has a relatively tucked rear end. The rear chainstay is 425, but it does have pretty good tire clearance. I've run up to 650B by 2.1s in here. Uh, if you swap this out to a 26 inch wheel set, you could fit in 2.3 inch tires. So again, fairly unique for the time. Another thing I liked about the ride, which is probably not intended, but was more of a solution to try to solve to overlap, is the slightly higher trail on this bike. When you run the trail numbers with 650B tires, it ends up being in the upper 70s, about 76, 75. Some would consider that high trail. For me, it's not so high that it induces uh, a ton of wheel flop that kind of negatively affects the handling at, at slower speeds. I think once you get into the mid to upper 80s, that's when it becomes really wheel floppy or drunken goaty in the front. I actually appreciate the slightly higher trail when descending. I, I feel like it stabilizes the front end. You could say that's a loss in agility, but for me, as a fairly cautious rider, I do appreciate its tendency to stay uh, on track, if you will. So, so together for me, this is a really interesting combination of a bike that feels quick and sporty in the rear. So I love it for climbing. I feel like I can throw the bike left and right, whether or not it makes me a faster climber, I don't know, probably not, but it feels fun. It feels fun going up and it feels fun going downhill. Again, with that added stability, big tire clearance, it makes for a nice and supple ride. So those are all the things I like about the Crest Bambora. So I know what you're thinking. If I love the Bambora so much, why buy the same Hillborn? For me, an interesting thing happened uh, last year when I was reviewing bikes. There's one bike in particular that completely changed my mind about my preferred geometry, and that is the Ritchie Outback. It's a bike that had fairly long chainstays, something that you would see typically in a touring bike, but it was a lot lighter than a touring bike, and you don't usually see that combination together. The Ritchie Outback is to the long chainstay set as the Midnight Special is to the road set. The Midnight Special gave responsive road-like handling, but with big tire clearance, and the Ritchie Outback gave you the smooth and stable handling of a touring bike, but without the extra weight and sluggishness. So that was a real aha moment about what could be achieved with a long chainstay bike. And it's because of the Outback that I actually ended up buying the Hillboard. So ribs are not for everybody. They are still rim brake. They have a quill stem. For me, the Hillborn got me fairly close to the Ritchie Outback, granted without all the modern touches and also slightly heavier. Another reason I ended up getting the Rivendell is that I've always wanted one. Riv has been a huge influence to me as a cyclist, and I finally had the opportunity to test ride one, fall in love with it, and buy it. So compared to the Bambora, the Rivendell is idiosyncratic in its own way. Instead of mismatched uh, post and flat mount disc brakes, it is 100% rim brake, which is a bit of a rarity these days. It also uses a quill stem as opposed to the modern threadless stems. In terms of geometry, this is where things get interesting. Uh, the rear chainstay on this bike is in the 450s as opposed 
to the very short and tucked 425 on the Crest Bimbora. And this is most noticeable when I'm going downhill. I feel like the bike it's just super planted, soaks up all the bumps, and it's just a plush riding experience. Interestingly, on the front end of this bike, the trail number is in the 60s. So kind of your, your typical road slash road endurance trail geometry. So for me, it's actually in the front end, a little bit of a quicker steering bike than the Crest Bimbora. Whereas the Crest likes to hold its line, the Verve actually allows for quicker corrections. You know, a word that I would use is it has a, a lighter steering response in the front end. The adjectives I like to use on the Bora are quick and spicy and jumpy. And for the Riv, it's smooth and chill and supple. I actually find that the Riv has more built-in suspension in the front for me when compared to the Bora. Tires being equal, you know, the fork, it's less built up. So there is some more ability for it to flex. But I think a big part is actually the quill stem. Every modern quill stem bike I've ridden uh, in the last like two or three years is hand over fist, more compliant and more supple in the front. So while that can be a negative thing, if you're mountain biking, you don't want that loose sloppy feeling, or if you're a sprinter and you want something stiff to kind of really wrench against, for the chill, party pace, relaxed gravel riding I do, it's actually a benefit. It's basically like having a suspension stem built into the frame and bike itself. So you can can see the the dilemma here which is better over the last couple of years my opinion has changed over the types of bikes that i like and the more i ride different bikes the more convinced i am that there is definitely not one perfect bike that is right for all people at all times even for me sometimes i like a quick and jumpy and sporty and spicy bike other times i want something that is super chill relaxed and plush like the riv so here's the thing, you can definitely like two types of different geometry at the same time. Just because you like one type of ride feel doesn't mean that you can never ride the other kind of bike. And I think this is why it's really hard for me to answer that question about which bike is better, because honestly, it just depends on my mood and you know what I want to ride that day. And I get it, this is a totally privileged position to have these two really nice bikes and be able to alternate between them. So I can see where people really just wanna know which one is better, but again, the answer really depends. Do you like that quick and spicy feeling or something more chill and relaxed? The good thing is there are a ton of options out there. You just kinda of have to know what you like. So for me, I don't look at bikes as absolutes. There's not one bike that is categorically better than one over the other. That's why I tend to prefer the food tasting metaphor. A good example is this. I'm a big fan of whiskey. I started with bourbon, but have started to ease my way into scotches and now have an appreciation for a nice PD scotch. When tasting things like whiskey or coffee, or there can be uh, many expressions of the same beverage. And sometimes those expressions are completely opposite from the other. It's really enlightening to try them back to back. Like when I try a really smoky whiskey and then try something from the Highlands right after, it really brings out those fruitier notes that I didn't notice before. So there's something beautiful in the contrast is what I'm saying. So riding these bikes has actually really changed my preferences on bike. First few years when I started doing this channel, I definitely had uh, a preference for short and tucked and quick and spicy. But after trying bikes like the Outback and the Hillborn, it's making me reevaluate that. Not that I think long chain stay bikes are universally better uh, at all times for all people over a short chain stay bike, but it's fun to have both. And depending on the ride, I prefer one over the other. I hope you enjoyed this format, something new. I might do more uh, bike battle uh, comparisons in the future. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And hey, if you haven't already, you should totally subscribe so we can turn on uh, that party pace light over there in the back which I've been teasing for like last month. It looks so good guys, when it's on, it's gonna look amazing. And if you like this content, don't forget to check out our shop or join us on Patreon. It's what keeps the lights on, literally. And as always, keep the supple side down.